Hey Soul Tribe, welcome to your Divine Guidance Reading, where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Fairy, Psychic Medium and Divine Channeler, hope to bring you a message. Now, always remember, my messages are unscripted, pretty much candid, essentially improvised. So if there's anything that I say that doesn't make any sense, totally fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to stick around and enjoy the show. Ugh, wow. Uh, trying to shuffle into whatever it is that the collective is ready to receive. Guys, big changes. And uh, again, it's this big change that happens with the sound of a very gentle whisper. Uh, many of you might be feeling as though you're stuck and yet moving forward. And for those of you, don't panic. Just because you don't enjoy roller coaster rides doesn't mean you're not safe. There's something that has been significantly accelerating in your day-to-day -day life and it may be a little bit uncomfortable because it's the first time or maybe a first time in a long time where you being able to maintain a semblance of power through stillness you knew it was possible, but many of you are beginning to actually bring this forward in your day-to-day -day life. Holy shit, because you're just ready to end stuff. Like, this is like, I'm okay, I'm going to take command of the situation. And in the past, when you've heard, I need to take command, it sometimes means I need to overtake, I need to take over. And but that's assuming that you need to bring troops with you. That's assuming that you need an army of minions to help you accomplish your goals. And this is a very solo motion, sort of reprogramming what taking command of a situation is supposed to be. Free will is divine, but your own ability to make choices for yourself, that's where you've been learning how to take control because it's putting you into a position to quickly start ending multiple karmic um situations, habits, um, just kind of these weird energies that you've been trying to get away from. Stuff is closing down. This is like a going out of business sale. Speaking of going out of business, we have the card of home. This is also an 1111 number for those of you who resonate being on a very deep level spiritual journey. Your foundation, the way that you've been building it up until this point was based on what other people thought that they should do for you. Someone took command of your life. And this could have been like a parent, a caregiver, a guardian. Um, and for some of you, probably a lover, someone that you felt like they might have known a little bit better than you. So you kind of gave them all of the control because you thought that they had some of the knowledge. But with the ooh, page of with the page of wands underneath here, like, first of all, you are recognizing when people are just coming in and out of your life, some of it just feeling at peace with the idea that people are allowed to come in and out of your life, that you're going to be seeing people who are mature, people who are immature, and in some ways learning how to not engage with it, still taking command of your own emotions, your own passion projects, taking control of the things that you wish to end in your own life. It's becoming this natural, soft boundary to your energy so that you can start holding still, that you can start creating space for yourself and allow other people to dance around you and put yourself more into observant energies because with this king of cups beneath here, this is your recognition of personal value. And some of you have might have been in a position to second guess of, am I getting off by being withholding? Is this actually true love? Is allowing somebody else to struggle and me just observing the struggle, is that kindness or is that cruelty? How many things have you been obliging yourself out of pure guilt? Like, don't get me wrong, like I'm Canadian. I, I'm all about, you know, the Sarah McLaughlin in the arms of the angel. And the problem is, is that um, a lot of folks, um, especially, say, celebrities, they go out of their way to create 
um, activism projects. But, you know, for those of you who know the, the, the songs of Sarah McLaughlin talking about how there are animals being abused day to day in different parts of the world, different parts of the country, like, oh my God, like we all know the commercial where it's a lot of this, I feel sad for the sad puppies and kitties. But unfortunately, instead of taking the lesson of it, <laughs> like, be like having everyone in a state where they can be cared for like there's nothing wrong with looking at a poor helpless animal and bringing it in and giving it comfort maybe rehoming it restoring it to health or you becoming their own parents but a lot of people look at these um public service announcements these activism um chants and cries they are legitimate, but we sometimes think that we need to help the animals first. We need to help the misfortunate first because really we're crying deep down inside for someone to love us. And we make the mistake of trying to like make pets or children or our friends to accommodate how empty we feel. It's a very weird message. Like it's kind of a weird workaround. But there's something about getting out of this idea that you need to oblige yourself to other people's charities because that person, that situation, that poor little animal looks like it's having a way worse time than me. But today's question is, am I okay <laughs> to take on other people's responsibilities? Am I in a position to care for animals? Am I in a position to care for a child? Am I in a position to care for um, a loved one? Am I in a position to help others? Whatever this weird kind of hinky spot is, I'm really hoping that Spirit's going to give you some answers to make you feel better about the stillness, to feel as though just because you don't jump up into action at the first cry that you aren't being selfish you aren't being cruel you aren't letting sarah mclaughlin down like, it's amazing how we easily make ourselves feel obligated to help others even if it is a legitimate cause but doing it in the wrong order oh if i help everybody else then they'll get their shit together then i can help me but you really just poured yourself into 50 people who have who can't even so you're waiting for 50 people to get their shit together before you get your own shit together how come when she says it that way it sounds ridiculous that's because it is but i decided to ask the um i'm hearing pleiadian but this is the star seed oracle just to get a bit of an idea of what um spirit wants to talk about today because at the base of the deck i have the temple temple of suspended endings which says stand still suspended animation holding space like <laughs> The, the funny image that I have right now is sort of like the freeze ray. It's like, freeze! But there's a piece of you, like, you'd love to have some comedy in terms of, you know, getting away with something or moving away from something and then being stuck and asking yourself, it's like, okay, what am I supposed to do with what's going on? I can work on my, you know, <laughs> I'm a terrible ventriloquist, but it's sort of as though... How can you communicate in stillness? How can you stand your ground in stillness, especially when you've been so accustomed to fighting for what you truly believe in, whether if it's fighting for social justice or fighting to ensure that, you know, all animals can have a safe place to live or, you know, fighting for the rights of children, like whatever it is that you've been naturally magnetized towards is sort of your soul calling. Because um, at the top of the deck, I do have the Orion Stargate, which says power, authority, influence, ambition. United States, culturally, I've noticed it's very much go out there, get in your face. I need to make sure that you're so aware of all the shit that's going on in the world. But everyone's exhausted from being yelled at. People are being, um, their, their hearts are shutting down because even if there's a lot of protests to try and save the planet, it, the messages haven't changed. It's the same chant from 40 years ago. It's as though things that are really important haven't even um, been able to move forward to make better progression in the grand scheme of things. And you may have felt guilty for standing still in a very difficult situation and in many ways not taking sides, trying to be a peacekeeper in a situation. But peacekeepers, it sounds great. And I'm Canadian, so I'm all about, you know, the UN peacekeepers. It's my little country, you know, nationalistic pride, if you will. But peacekeepers, 
They're not really well revered. You know, they'll stick themselves in, in front of two warring factions between two warring people at the risk of getting themselves hurt for the sake of maintaining peace on both sides. But how does one create peace through inaction. I got a few cards for this because I thought this is interesting because we also have the seal of indivisible vision, psychic vision, hidden meanings, dream reading. Because for those of you who've been stuck in this energetic escrow and have been um, trying to figure out why they aren't moving forward, your dreams probably been kicking up. Your daydreams have become more vivid. Some of you are starting to notice the patterns. You've been thinking about it, but then it's presenting itself like with your friendships or synchronicities through um, like stuff that the algorithm is showing to you. Noticing these, you know, I can't believe it's not a coincidence. Your psychic abilities have been amping up and the only reason any of you who might be feeling a little bit restless in the stillness is that you're unaccustomed to your body being quiet but your soul and your mind being fully activated because at the third card i grabbed this is the syrian stargate transcendence prayerfulness serenity this is being able to surrender the things that you cannot change and allowing other people to go about their own business in their own right Finding your own personal peace, knowing that inaction and action are both, what's the word? Action and inaction are both valuable ways of approaching a problem and feeling better as to why you decided to make those decisions. So at the base of the sacred symbols, just to get some spirit clarity, I did the card of gratitude and I, I had a good eye roll. Like one of you had mentioned that one of your candle holders exploded like holy fuck because underneath that we have the card of knowledge like there's something about this period of standstill or the appearance as though nothing's happening but if you really tuned into it and were super honest realizing there's a lot going on but even though your brain isn't registering it the same way, just know that it's because you're out of trauma. A lot of things go on around you at all times. And those of us who have been a, been a high sensitive trauma state, we pay attention to everything. And our human brains aren't necessarily designed for that. And this is actually you healing and learning how to properly filter so that you no longer ignore important symbols and signals and you you know because you probably accidentally dismissed important things you probably thought that wasn't your intuition this is about you realizing what your intuition was supposed to be in the first place and the standstill getting used to where you are at right now what's happening within your body what's happening within your mind what's happening within your soul and if it feels like nothing feeling okay about that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this before we dive into the tarot as well, before we ask what the fuck. Hmm. It's interesting. We do have the card of jealousy, but I'm seeing this more as protection. This is the evil eye. The eye itself is not evil, but it's uh, a gentle reminder for those of you who have been concerned that other people will not support your pursuit of personal peace. That People will not understand these weird dreams that you are having. Believe me, I stopped telling people about these weird ass dreams that I was having even like, yeah, about a year ago, because most people, if they're not able to handle their spiritual side, they dismiss it. They say, well, you know, it's just random neurons doing random things, or maybe you shouldn't worry yourself about it. And it's like, no, I'm telling you something really fucking cool that happened. Like, why are you dismissing it? It's recognizing what other people's doubts have crept into your own spiritual journey. And quite honestly, some of these things are just be best for your diary and or your therapist. I tell all my therapist about my dreams. And if anything, I feel like she's extremely entertained with the stuff that I have to talk about. Um, but for those of you who've been withdrawing and feeling a little bit of the tension, it's again, learning how do you ignore the things that are not important and pay attention to the things that do matter to you because you're gonna be noticing how many jealous people that you've had around you. And I wouldn't even say it's necessarily malicious. Like I grew up 
house broke. I grew up not having a lot of access to money and being able to do all the activity to Like, it wasn't that bad, but, you know, again, we were joking earlier. It's like, you know, I'm not a fan of mashed potatoes. Like, mashed potatoes is the flavor of, like, you know, hard times. It's the same thing with my ex-husband. He used to have, like, a gin distillery as one of his clients. He does IT. And he got so annoyed at one point because he felt like gin smelled like broken Wi-Fi. It's amazing how we have little um, associations to our frustrations where it's sort of like, yeah, how does gin smell like, you know, broken Wi-Fi? How do mashed potatoes actually taste like hard times? How does watered down juice suddenly put you in like some weird, like, you know, caste system assumption of your poverty? Like people are super funny and super weird about their prejudices, but there's something about this good fortune underneath the jealousy. And we have the color of chartreuse and, you know, my fellow color nerds out there, chartreuse, this green yellow, it's the very center of the rainbow spectrum. And it's also the most visible in all conditions. There's going to be something if you haven't seen yet, it's going to be fucking obvious that good things are happening to you, that you are coming out of poverty, whether if that is emotional, physical, um, material poverty and good things are coming towards you and the people who are jealous are the ones that they don't understand what you have gone through, what you have endured. Like, again, making fun of the, you know, the, the Sarah McLachlan, um, like, you know, adopt a dog, uh, you know, campaign. It's, it's sort of like you were technically the puppy, like you've already had hard times and there's something about you adopted yourself. You took yourself in. You recognized your own pain. And everyone else around you never figured that out. So before we go and cut the tarot, the you know, at the base of the deck, I did get Nine of Swords. But the chariot flew out as I was shuffling. And it's a bit of this stuck stop. Just as to reiterate that this holding still, this inaction, is very critical to your thinky thoughts, because this is a usually the up into the middle of the night, having nightmares, second guessing everything you ever did, not being able to get enough sleep. But in this particular deck, it's sort of as though there's this peace and reverence that you are learning to appreciate while you feel stalled. And these jealous energies, these could be your family members saying that you're not committed to them. These could be lovers claiming that, you know, you're not the same as you used to be. Why did you change so much? There's a lot of this you, 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 you accusational um, rhetoric that I keep hearing and feeling. And this is that Knight of Wands, the card that showed up in your pre-shuffle. Just this, oh my God, really? This is incentivizing you to finally end something. Nine is the end in tarot to reset to a 10 and or one. This is the end of something. And you're starting to feel really peaceful about it because there's a, I'm hearing people's true colors are starting to come to the surface. And when I said that and felt that, oh my God, I just felt suddenly sick and really, oh, just really sad. Like it's disappointing when our heroes and our, like people who we've built an entire life around, a lifestyle, an image, our livelihood, our assumptions of everything. There is a bit of this fresh reset energy that you can start looking forward to. And there's going to be a lot to fucking, um, <laughs> I was going to say a lot to fucking separate, but this is also a lot to fucking celebrate because we do have three of cups, the card of abundance. Like there's going to be a lot for you to really celebrate, to look forward to, to start differentiating your own energy from everybody else's and feeling okay when it comes to taking responsibility for your action and your inaction. Because beneath that, we do have the Empress. And I do want to say that there's the Seven of Discs. The card below that does say failure, but I'm also picking that up as, you know, fail fast, learning from failure, realizing over time what was getting in the way of your ability to self-manifest, to be your own beacon of abundance, to have commitment to your own self-love and to feel divinely protected because the things that have been holding you back 
have been external factors and you've been trying to find the answers through the external. So after we go to cut, whoa, we got a king of swords and a king of wands. Like this is a mass upgrade for a lot of you. Being able to come to your own divine truth. This is um, Archangel Michael energy, being able to bring in the sword of truth and discerning when other people are... Um, bullshitting you and having the and this is it's this prince of wands but this is a kingly energy being able to take ownership for yourself whether if that is oh wow we are not compatible not giving in to anger if uh, if other energies just are completely dissonant from you are trying to cut you out cut you down um or even you having a real good sense of hot and cold because some of you are still working out um, temper tantrums, like initially reacting to a message and getting pissed off. This is a, some old karmic energy coming up that's still trying to be released. That's why the solo time is not a bad idea because if you're gonna lose your shit, first of all, it's important to feel the anger. It's, it's unwise to solve the problem while you are angry. And this is easy as like, you know, an email communication where, you know, someone gets, gets to you, tells you something and it just makes you raged. Like, first of all, feel the rage. Don't rage at them. Don't rage at your children, your spouse, your family members, your Facebook, my favorite. Oh, I don't really want everybody else's reply, but I really need to get something off of my chest here on Facebook. And I'm going to be super vague about it because I'm trying not to get other people involved, but I'm going to make you involved because I'm going to have you like listen to my entire thing. Like, whoa, like this is a really dramatic um, uh, attention getting energy that a lot of people have been accustomed to just dumping their emotions on the internet rather than dumping your emotions into yourself. This is supreme ownership. And notice how fast this king is driving the car. Like it's sort of as though you went from having like a street, but like, you know, like kind of like a little bicycle, like bing, bing, and you got yourself a big fucking Ferrari <laughs> and learning the difference in the power between the two, because below that we have the card of wealth, which is 10 of coins. Like, how do you get this long term drive and determination without burning yourself out? And it is about, you know, staying calm and collected within your thoughts, knowing that if something is going to be brought up to the surface, it's OK to be angry. It's OK to be disappointed. It's OK to think that, you know, blah, 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 blah. keep it to yourself. Feel it into yourself. Don't feed it. Just feed feel it because beneath that four of swords i love it like this is gonna be your modality to help get rid of some of the last traces of um you know for some of you this may feel like the release of spell work sometimes that can just ugh, out of nowhere and my clue for if this is spell work is is um if i read something and it angers me pisses me off and I, I have to walk away and allow myself to digest the energy when i come back to it later and i don't feel the energy whatsoever it's sort of like no that email was actually really sensible that person like they were just being kind of frank and you know they weren't adding in a little bit of ha, 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 to the email tone it's sort of like you go back to reread it and recognize wow, I did not interpret this email the way that I was before. Like, I'm being specific, but I think it's a lovely example uh, to kind of give you some hints if you feel like this is spell work. But this is also not necessarily unusual for folks who are in the process of um, recovering from certain forms of PTSD. But that said, like, what the fuck is going on around you? Star in the reverse and happiness. Uh. So the, the Thoth tarot, I do always keep in the upright. And uh, there, there, there's a bit of a, a lie. If we're going to be seeing the King of Swords, meaning you have to embody your truth, it means you have to defend yourself against other people's lies. And the worst part about these lies, they think, they think it is their truth. And they might have be saying things to you like no you are my dream come true like or if you were committed to me you would work it out with me but that always translates as i give into you after a while it turns into a big negotiation like this is the kind of energy where 
<laughs> you know, you, you know your marriage is going to start falling apart unless you get help and you actually do get help. But even, you know, sitting with the therapist and your so-called partner that you're trying to work things out with, they still have their own motivation as to what they want to get out of the relationship. And you yourself have your own motivation. And there's this recognition that what they are looking for does not make me happy. And the idea of staying with them won't leave me being happy. And this is a power struggle. Like this is probably a relationship where this is all about being competitive. Like, you know, hints that you might be with someone who struggles with this. They're competitive with their siblings. They're competitive with their coworkers. They're competitive with you. There's always this desire to one up, figuring out who's on whose side. Like we're like when we're emailing each other, like, you know, we have group A and we all talk about the, the storyline that we're all going with. And then you have group B and, you know, maybe you have a mole that's going to go like, oh my God. God, guys, like, I know, I know that Friends was a big, huge thing in the 90s. Like, I hated that show. I fucking hated those teen drama shows. My sister was really into them. So you can imagine, like, the sibling rivalry where it's like, you know, she wants to watch 90210, but I want to watch Star Trek. Like, <laughs> but there's some kind of weird power struggle that you've been in and you're being asked, like, if you're still kind of in the middle of it, to see how they're reacting with the rest of their family. How are they talking about um, their coworkers? How are they talking about their friends? Chances are they're talking about you the exact same way. I'm always very suspicious of people who whine, bitch, and moan about their friends because if all they're trying to do is create a narrative to get you to be on their side, like, oh yeah, that sounds like this. Oh yeah, that's totally like that. Oh yeah, you were totally like in line to do this. Again, you're in a position of trying to get others to agree with you in order to make your position valid. And you have been overcoming this energy a lot. And many um, light workers get caught up in this narcissistic cycle, partly because it is self-elected. Because there is a piece of you that's more than likely said, why do people fucking behave this way? This is an immigrant problem. Like, when you're not from the same country, even if I do speak English, I'm not speaking the same language in this country. And the weird part was is that I'm like, okay, well, America's a melting pot and you're supposed to like blend in, especially if you're my skin tone because racism. So, okay, I'm gonna act like an American. <laughs> and nobody liked what I had to offer. All I did was reflect other people's energy. All of a sudden I became a Karen. I was just, people decided I was entitled. People started to think that I was the gossip. People thought I was full of shit. People got intimidated because I have a different educational system. People got intimidated this that 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 this and this isn't the berry show although it kind of is but i only talk about things that make sense to me stuff that i have experienced because it resonates with you guys to some degree or another where you have been speaking a different language you even try to blend in maybe to make a friend maybe out of morbid curiosity in some ways it just became a bit of a habit there's a lot of head clearing <laughs> going on because like yeah my nose is going to want to start watering sometime soon because there's a lot of emotions with this person this situation that you've been around and many of them may still be obliging you saying it's that they poured so much into you and you owe them like <laughs> It's not a reasonable negotiation, but that said, what's going on from your perspective? Let's double check. Yeah, Ace of Coins in the reverse to the Knight of Discs. It's like, I'm not, no, I'm not investing into this. It's sort of as though you've poured so much energy into the situation, into this person. And it's sort of like, you know, I'm not even asking for the debt. Like it's almost debt forgiveness energy. It's more like, like, no, I'm just going to, we're calling it zero. Like we're calling this the base point. You've recognized where you've been pouring all of your physical assets, your emotional assets, money, your home, your devotion. Like the knights are very loyal. They can be very hardworking, but they can be loyal for all the long, all the long reasons, the wrong reasons. And you've been so committed to this other energy because you liked that you were their dream come true. But the reason why we have this king again is because they aren't your dream come true. You might have 
magnetize this person into your life and on the surface it looked like a dream come true but it was because you were responding to their energy you fulfilled a hope of happiness um that they thought they could extract from you and they've been playing power games in order to keep you and this is sort of evidence that well, what would happen if I stopped giving to this? What happens if, you know, I don't ask for, I just saw 29, 29 on the clock. You know, what happens if I just not? Like, what happens if I just allow this thing to die naturally? It's kind of like, <laughs> if this is an interesting image. I, I, I kind of garden, like, you know, I can keep a few plants alive. And I used to have a snake plant and um, the snake plants are lovely. Like they are great for, um, reoxygenating the air. I've been a huge fan of them. Uh, whenever we have fire season, I always keep actually a snake plant um, on my table over here, you know, but these are very, um, <laughs> they're bitchy little buggers. They love to stay dry. And the moment you overwater them, like they just collapse and die. Like these are definitely the plants that operate way better in the desert. But there's something about if you notice with a plant, a snake plant, where the root rot has started to kick in, usually the first reaction is, okay, I need to dry the soil. I need to do nothing. I need to create inaction. Because the moment that you try to intercede on a plant like this, um, more moisture will continue to have a problem. And the worst part is, like, the, it's all been going on underneath the surface. And it's only now you started noticing... Um, the how this relationship's gotten sick so there's something to be said about feeling better about having that in action because you've been taught and this is a masculine wound saying that not doing anything makes you a bad person and it's not you're actually trying to learn how to heal a, a society dynamic but in order to heal society you got to heal yourself because you can't assume that healing 50 people around you will equal healing for yourself it means you've done all the work for 50 other people you probably did it for free so now you're wondering why you're indebted to 50 people's energies and you feel sicker and in to some degree, you've been accidentally taking on everybody else's karma, accidentally taking on everybody else's burdens, misunderstanding what Jesus was talking about when it came to bearing all of sin. And the next stage of your healing is to do nothing, to know that doing nothing right now is the healthy thing to do, most likely because in the past, you probably did nothing on something that you knew could have been good, but you were too afraid to jump on it. And that was a freeze trauma. So there's something about in the past, you may have felt like you let go of a good opportunity. You may have let go of a friendship that wasn't as, you know, hinky as all these other people tried to tell you. And learning to make new decisions is very uncomfortable, but you can't avoid making a decision forever. And a lot of it is you finding the space of, <laughs> I'm hearing the space of centralization, bringing it back to a neutral place, knowing that you made the decisions that you made, that you were actually trying to help somebody else's dream come true. You know, you can give yourself a pat on the back that you, you were trying to do this from a caring spot, but they can't, you know, outside of like, you know, the transactional bullshit, they, they can't reimburse you. Like, you know, I've worked on a lot of projects that I've never been paid for, you know, and I have to always trust the universe that my abundance will come in for anything that I poured in, um, like anything that I did legitimately, stuff that I did out of the kindness of my heart, even if I didn't see the immediate wealth from that energy, Trusting that what I poured in karmically will be re will be restored to me karmically. Karma isn't a bad thing. I just think of it as consequences. You have an action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. And the way that it's manifested back to you gives you information as to how this cycle worked or did not work as you are actively manifesting. That said, what kind of guidance would spirit have for you at this time? Seven of wands, queen of wands. I'm really happy to see this because this is the stand your own ground. Um, with the queen of wands here, eh, 
Mm, like this goes this goes one way or the other from your perspective it's recognizing where your power and authority truly lies and this is a lot to do with the empress that i saw earlier but this is the it's sort of like if the empress could have some sort of xeno warrior princess standing next to her um you know because i'm noticing this queen is petting the cat it's like a little scratch 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 there's this piece of you that you know you can release your power on someone at a moment's notice. This is the word meek, M-E-E-K, not to be confused with the word weak. Meekness is power under control. So if you have like a horse, you know, or in this case, you know, your, your own pet lion that, you know, I was talk, joking, calling this the Ferrari being able to release your inner beast when you want is actually it's sort of like when do you know when it's time to say go like you know you're the one who's holding the pistol at a race you know and you have like you know three two one go go to the races there's something about you actually have way more control of the situation that you're giving yourself credit for and giving in to somebody else's threat that they might take you down because this energy is also a bit threatening that's why i'm getting this sort of power struggle and in some ways this person is waiting for you to blow up this person is waiting for you to let your guard down this person is waiting for you to behave in the way that you always have if you were somebody that never spoke up um knowing the right time when it is appropriate to speak with with clarity simplicity honesty making it about your own perspective the good old i statements if we're gonna be bringing in like you know marriage therapy jokes definitely learning the i statements and learning the difference between allowing someone the space to digest their emotions before coming back around to talk about what happened as opposed to stonewalling or abuse or harassment there's a lot of um you know the knowledge you actually know the theory chances are you're somebody who did a lot of research to understand about addiction and abuse and these narcissistic dynamics and sure the literature is there but there's something that never computed for you personally that's why having this peaceful transcendence like you know this is holding space knowing that the inaction is sort of like allowing the flames to die naturally like even in firefighting situations there there come certain points where the building is gone the building is at a loss and you have to allow the building to burn so you have to create a safe perimeter to ensure that it doesn't spread there's something to be said about a controlled burn going on right now what does guidance have to say full moon like this is the energy of things being highlighted in our life coming um to the end of a particular cycle and i kind of want to pull a card for the full moon where are my moon witches nope no moon witch okay i'm looking at moonology so i want to get a couple of cards to clarify full moon because you know when i see moony stuff i i go into timeline mode before i go to shuffle new moon in sagittarius luck is on your side can i get a clarifier for the full moon as it pertains to this <laughs> when to make a leap oh interesting oh wow i keep getting this card meditate contemplate new moon in pisces actually no i keep getting the full moon in pisces never mind huh yeah meditate contemplate sort of ruminating on what's been going on because i got another 29 right here with this card fixed moon hold your vision like hold still it's sort of like the moon moves no matter what. You move with the moon, even if you do feel as though you're standing still. It brings me back to that joke about, you know, you may feel like you're doing nothing and a lot is going on around you, but all you all that's happened is you got strapped into a roller coaster. And the only thing that you need to do is enjoy the ride. Because after that, we also have full moon and cancer. 
a personal issue reaches resolution. This is, um, if, was it a full moon in Cancer, which I believe that is around Capricorn season. So towards the end of this calendar year, the beginning of 2024, there's something about for the next three months being able to, first of all, know what your vision is. There's no sense in holding something and holding on to something with great peace if you don't even know why you're holding on to it in the first place. But right now, you're being asked to be fixed upon yourself. Allow the rest of the world to whirlwind around you, trusting, you know, with this king of wands like this is the roller coaster ride trusting that you have so much fucking divine support right now that even if you don't give to these third parties they can't take anything away from you that would actually cause any harm because what they're bringing in, what they're negotiating with you in this power struggle is bringing more karma upon you, but it's really coming down to their, their sense of jealousy. They know you're moving away. They can feel it. And they know that the more successful you get, the less that they are going to be important to you. This is getting out of a very dark transactional relationship. And this could have been... This relationship could have gone on for decades, but this could also just be a habit of a type of person that you haven't have had involved in your life. Wow. Well, as you are able to hold yourself steadfast, you know, not being stubborn to prove yourself to others, but calm and almost stoic because you've been able to house your own internal power, exercising your meekness, even if others would accuse you of weakness, how are you going to feel at the end of all of this? Seven of Swords and Fortune. This is the Wheel of Fortune. Like, there's a reason why you need to sit back. You're being asked to observe. You've been confused. You, you may still be asking questions. Why are people behaving this way? How is it that someone that I've loved and care about for so long could start behaving this way? You're gonna notice personality changes. Um, there are people around you who have not been completely honest. Some of it is malicious, but for others of you, it's just other people around you who never really thought they could be honest with you. One reason or the other. Again, not taking it personally. Um, but because you have been so engaged verbally and karmically with this situation, you've been a fish in water. And the more that you continue to distance yourself from the rhetoric, from the drama, from the storyline, this is getting out of the, the curiosity of the storyline. Like, you know, there's two types of people I've noticed. Like if you're in a highly densely populated area, subconsciously, I want to offer people privacy. So even if there's like a, an open window or people are out on their patio or going about their business, I, I just kind of subconsciously tune everybody out. I tend to like look a little bit closer to the ground. I like to be in my own head and, you know, I'm still aware of my surroundings, but there are other people that have no problem peering into other people's houses. They have no problem like, you know, staring into their backyard. They have no problem um, if there's an open window, they seem to think that this is their, like, oh, well, they didn't properly cover up their house, so it means I'm allowed to peek in. This is a, like, this is a peeping Tom energy that's actually kind of gross, and you, There's a little bit of confusion as to, you know, how people might have been invading into your space, but you're being asked to kind of have, have a look at how you go about your day-to-day -day life. Don't get me wrong. People watching can be absolutely fascinating, but there's something about the curiosity. Is it really any of your business? Like, it's really easy for people to go into social media and start, like, looking up um, you know, information about them, like, you know, trying to figure out oh, who they've been affiliated with. What are they actually up to? Do they even think about me? Um, you know, am I having a better life than them? Getting out of this competitive idea that we need to sneak on people to make sure that we're doing better than them. No, that's like, what is this fucking middle school, junior high, where, you know, you always, you always had to find like one kid below you to make fun of. Ugh. 
this is childish energy. This is arrested development energy that you've been so ingrained into that it never even occurred that what you were doing was rude and invasive. The more you distance yourself from these people, you're going to start noticing these behaviors and it's going to be important. You're healing. You need to take it easy. You've been through a lot. Like many of you have had to deal with um, deaths. We have all have had to deal with the pandemic when we're the other. Many of you have been dealing with breakups, house moves. These are life stressors. Life stressors can take six months to two years for us to rebalance out of it. So th there's an encouragement here saying, don't hurry. There is no benefit for you hurrying through these energies. It costs extra time, extra energy, and a lot of you are still trying to work through lack mentality. This is to help you catch up to your own self. You've been spread too thin with too many energies and you are still retrieving a lot of that energy. Most of it you didn't even realize you never had in the first place. Holy fuck. I keep getting the card, a divine feminine. And this is the part of you that you can't prove. This is the, your, your pure intention, your actual truth, the things that you know, the thoughts that you think. That's what art is for. That's why we have literature. That's why we content create. We have ideas, we have information, and we wish to spread it. But to whom? Most people, this, they go from ego to ego. Like if other people don't like my art, well, then it means I'm not a good artist as opposed to, I have a way that I need to express something within my soul and I'm trying to find a way to bring it out to the surface so that other people can appreciate it. You know, not as in to appreciate me, but to appreciate the artwork because there's a chance for you to start creating things that resonate with other people, but it starts with something that resonates with yourself. You know yourself best. And if you can find out who you are 100%, it means you're going to create things that resonate with other people. Because even if you come across someone who only acts like themselves 20% of the time, but you act like yourself 100% of the time, you still resonate with the 20% of somebody else's true identity. If they like it or not, that's where the complication comes in. You've actually seen through this person the entire time. You've actually known they've been full of shit. You knew they were never able to actually properly bring themselves up to the plate. And you thought that you could be, I'm sorry, you know, candy money bags, like to help this person out. You wanted to give them, um, you wanted to give them a handout. You thought you saw their potential. And in some ways you did. But here's the thing. You saw the 20% that they liked about themselves, but 80% of the rest of that person, they fucking loathe themselves. And they're so focused on what they hate, they think that you are everything that they hate. So in some ways, learning how to take this personally, forgiving yourself, and also giving yourself a little bit of credit, you actually did see the person's true intentions. You wanted to help them manifest something into reality, but in the end, you're not there, God. You belong to yourself, and you're the one who can make the best possible decisions for yourself, and if anybody else wants to listen to your good fucking advice, God bless them. So, I'm gonna end off today's reading with uh, a card from the Sacred Rebels Oracle, because we need some powerful rebellion energy even if that rebellion is nothing more than being able to um be able to sit in our own power and feel good about just fucking recharging ourselves so <laughs> so i'm gonna be reading from the guidebook on this one because there's some lovely poetry in here but i do have the card of relax the hold of darkness and be at cause. Like, I think this is going to be a lot of the stories that you're going to be embodying over the next, you know, I'm hearing again, like till the end of this calendar year and otherwise the next like, um, three to four months. All right. Dear sacred rebel, this moment in your life requires great courage. Fortunately, you possess that in bucket loads. You're being asked to allow yourself to be lifted out of one level of known reality and into the next level of a higher voltage reality. Higher voltage reality requires the more absolute trust and a heart that is surrendered into the greater heart of the universe so that life can happen to us, through us, with us, more quickly, more radically, more beautifully, more boldly. 
You are now being invited into this new reality where things happen quickly and according to bold, loving optimism. This is a reality, not only of potential, but of manifestation of the great, big, cosmic yes. You're being asked right now, can you say yes to your own manifestations? Can you say yes to the things that you love? Can you say yes to being able to hold still and trust that the stillness has great power? Your mind is being healed but your soul is being activated. Continue to close out these cycles. Continue to close out the karma that is no longer compatible with the things that you are dreaming about. Pay attention to your dreams, your visions, whether if that is full on dreams where we have messages and images from, I'm hearing your star family, or even as you fall asleep, allowing your brain that 10 minutes to quiet down and be silent. Many of you are gonna start seeing flashes of light. Some of it may look like letters in a language that you know, or probably a language that you don't know. You won't be able to remember what the fuck those images were. Those are for your subconscious. Your subconscious is being activated, and this is learning how to integrate your divine feminine to your physical divine masculine energies. This is your artistry being activated. So you can finally be able to take this pool of knowledge, this wealth of information, this Akashic record of awesome, and being able to finally deliver it in a package that is perfectly attuned to your own soul calling. I'm just saying, woof. Well, whoever you are, damn. I sincerely hope that this helped. Wow. Well, thanks again, everyone, for hanging out, especially during the premiere. If you like my style, you're more than welcome to like, share, subscribe to my channel, especially if you'd like to get more robust messages just like this. And until the next one, everybody, I'll see you then. Bye.